Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a very quick video and a blog uh, to deal with three emails that seem to be recurring a lot lately that all have a similar answer. So the first one is I've had a number of people say uh, or, or forward an email that's all red, you know, auto SSL certificate, you know, it's down, your website could be compromised, it's no longer secure, etc. Uh, this is the sort of alarmist, generic error message that geeks write, because it's, you know, to the point, to get attention. The trouble is, it's sent on the slightest little trigger wire. So let me explain what happens. For many websites run by small businesses, we make use of automatically provisioned SSL security certificates on your site so that when you're on the web, uh, the website will have a lovely little padlock in the browser bar or a green padlock in some cases. And uh, that just shows you that everything's secure. It shows visitors the same thing. Plus, uh, Google's Chrome browser, uh, Microsoft's Edge browser, Mozilla Firefox, etc. They all keep an eye out for this. And if the security certificate is missing or broken or compromised, they will either not show the site or put up a big warning. So if you go forward, uh, the people running this site could be trying to scam you, which we don't want. So it's right to take action when a security certificate is down. Here's the rub. These transitions uh, every month or so uh, reinvigorate or reload the certificate. So a fresh one is installed. And so it keeps going like that in perpetuity. If there is a millisecond gap between the old one going down and the new one being provisioned, bing, off goes the, uh, the error warning. Up go your hackles, your anxiety levels, and then thankfully you reach out to me or whoever is your trusted um, internet guide, website guide, uh, and run it past them, uh, which is always the best thing to do. And I, I'm on the, just about to write a generic email I can send back to explain a simple test. If you see this message, just go to your website in a browser, and if the padlock is fine. All is good. It's moved on. Uh, if not, then we do need to take some action and see what's happening. And typically, the first port of call is your web host. And uh, go to their chat, their support, and they will typically remedy this within a wink. Uh, so that's the first thing that I just wanted to draw attention to. Uh, the second one is there's been a lot of emails going around now uh, to register the .au domain for your business if you currently have a .com.au because this is a, a, a new extension for domains at the top level that is available. And the 20th September in 2022 is the cutoff for having the priority registration. If you have the current .com.au, you can then, if you're eligible, grab the .au version of your domain too. Between you and me, I think this is going to be a bit faddish and I think consumers for a long time will habitually expect there to be a .com.au in a domain. Um, but, you know, uh, geeks do get a bit bored, uh, look for new things to do. And also this is another revenue stream uh, for the registrar to to manage and for resellers to to make a little bit of money on so you know it's what keeps the world going around do you get it or don't you get it here's my view we don't know if it's going to become a big thing or not and at the moment many web hosts the good ones like i use venture ip a lot they have it heavily discounted to about nine dollars a year and you can buy up to five years in advance. For, so for the sake of about 40 ish $50, I think it's prudent to grab the .au if you're entitled to it so that nobody else can take it. And you know, while you have it, you can then set up a quick redirection so that if anyone does, for whatever reason, just go to your domain name .au at least I'll end up on your currently operating website. And who knows, down the track, if I'm totally wrong, you will have this up your sleeve and you might be able to revert the settings and make .au the main site. 
or do some other things with it. So there you go. That is an, a bit of advice on that one. And the third one is these still come up. And I think we should all become a lot savvier about these. And they are the pesky little email saying, we've been over your site and we've discovered there are some issues with it, either technical issues or you're not coming up in search as well as you should and we can help you. Um, long story short, they've never looked at your website. They are just using low down tricks to send badly worded but fear intentioned emails your way to try and get you onto their scammy, brummy little um, uh, programs of spending a few dollars, a few hundred dollars a month, a few thousand, whatever it might be, for them to work their white hat magic SEO, or um, most of which uh, ends up getting you into trouble because very few of them actually run um, proper uh, programs because if they did, They'd be starting at the basics, making sure the website's functional and easy to read and relevant, has helpful inform information, is leaning to be for, uh, helpful uh, to users and building it up from there, making sure the technical things are right, of course. But, you know, there's a lot of hard work that can't be glossed over for quick tricks. So my simple advice with all of these emails is, first of all, know that they are lying to you. Secondly, um, reflect, would you like to do business with an entity that lies or pesters you? I think not. And thirdly, if it has ruffled some feathers, do have a chat to your person. If you're one of our clients, have a chat to me. Uh, if you're, you have someone else who's looking after your, your marketing and your digital marketing, have a chat to them. If they're a trusted advisor and just talk about it. Every now and then through sheer coincidence, they might mention something that is relevant that you can take action on. But remember, their main goal is to scare you into action and then fleece you for as much money as possible. They are the scum of the earth, these sorts of companies that use these strategies to try and hook you into their world. And we don't have time for that. Here it talked about marketing. Business is personal. Business is humans engaging with other humans and we need to have that mutual respect for each other and uh, always strive to do what's right.